you may be seated. Welcome to the 2024 graduation ceremony of the University of Vermont Rubenstein School of Environment and Natural Resources. This is the 51st graduation of our school, and I now invite Interim Dean Alan Strong to the podium to offer words of welcome and to introduce our commencement speaker. Alan. Thank you, Claire. So I am honored and delighted to welcome you to the 2024 graduation celebration of the Rubenstein School of Environment and Natural Resources. It's a joy to see all of you, family and friends, here to celebrate your students' accomplishments and personal goals. Let me first start by extending some well-deserved and hard-earned thank yous. First and foremost, I want to thank the families and friends of our graduates for helping us get students to the finish line. Your students, our students, would not be here if it were not for your love and support. Thank you for all you've done to encourage and inspire your students. They've worked incredibly hard for this milestone, could not have done it without you. Students, please stand and take a moment to thank your families and friends for their belief in you over the last four years. <laughs> Thank you. You may be seated. Next, I'd like to extend a huge thank you to our dedicated and talented faculty. You've been such an important part of our students' education in the Rubenstein School and a huge support to me as interim dean. Our faculty have given so much of themselves in so many ways to provide a transformative experience for you, for all of you from NR1 to NR4060 in your senior year through internships, research, service learning, and study abroad. Our amazing faculty have inspired, enlightened, and helped you discover your talents and passions over these last four years. Students, please join me in thanking our faculty for their engagement, mentorship, and dedication to your success. I'd also like to thank our wonderful, dedicated staff who support our school and students on an hourly basis, literally 24-7. Please join me in thanking our administrative staff, research staff, student services team, and professional advisors for their year-round, steadfast support of all of you. I can't think of a more caring and committed group of people. Thanks to all of you. And uh, finally, I'd like to give a, uh, a shout out to the Rubenstein family. So um, as, uh, as many of you know, um, Beverly Rubenstein uh, this morning at the UVM commencement was given an honorary doctoral degree um, by President Garamella. And I'd just like to recognize Beverly and the Rubenstein faculty for all that they've contributed to the school over the years. Um, the incredible gift of their endowment has just led to so many amazing opportunities for the school. In my short time as interim dean, I've been able to use their generous gift to directly support students, faculty, staff, and create community and building experiences that have made us a truly special place to work and to learn. I can't say enough for their support. Um, as you've heard me say before, the name Rubenstein is now synonymous with excellence in environmental teaching, scholarship, and outreach. 
and just a warm thank you to the whole Rubenstein family. <clears throat> So today is really about all of you students and an opportunity to celebrate your success. Students, look to your right. <laughs> nice job. Look to your left. <laughs> so your friends and peers sitting next to you today will become part of a lifelong Rubenstein School community and will from this day forward become your professional network. You all share the common experience and bond of being a graduate of the Rubenstein School of Environment and Natural Resources. You are now one of 6,000 plus students who have graduated from our school. You are the class of 2024. Congratulations. <laughs> So I'm now honored to introduce today's speaker and my friend, Dr. Rebecca Stanfield McCown. Dr. Rebecca Stanfield McCown is director of the National Park Service's Stewardship Institute. Rebecca holds a Bachelor of Science degree in natural resources, recreation, and tourism from Colorado State University, and a Master of Science and a PhD in natural resources from the University of Vermont. Rebecca's dissertation was awarded the Best Dissertation Award from the American Academy for Park and Recreation Administration in 2012. And for the last five years, Rebecca has served on the Rubenstein School's Board of Advisors. Rebecca has worked on national and international projects, including the Department of Interior, Environmental Justice, Community Engagement Initiatives, and the National Park Service Urban Agenda, advancing facilitation and dialogue skills and peer leadership development in the National Park Service. Her amazing career continues as she is currently serving as De Deputy Director for Environmental Justice and Public Engagement from the Council on Environmental Quality. Her work has focused on supporting Park Service staff, building partnerships, advancing creative approaches to public and community engagement, and developing leadership skills for public land managers. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Rebecca Stanfield McCown. Thank you very much, Alan. And I want to start by personally thanking you for your tremendous leadership of the school over the last two years. So thank you. All right, Ooh, let's fix that. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed faculty and staff, that's how AI told me to start this. Um, thank you for allowing me to spend the day with you. It's truly special to be back here to celebrate another graduation. I've sat in those same seats, my last one I was sitting on this side, for both my master's and my PhD ceremony. As I was drafting this talk, I thought a lot about my seven years at the Rubenstein School, the strong connections I have continued with the community here over my, I don't even want to say how many years gone. When I was a PhD student in the old Aiken building before it was renovated, my office shared a wall with Alan Strong. And so as I was thinking about how to prepare for this speech, the years of thin office walls assured one thing, that I am done trying to be funny because I do not want to be upstaged by Alan's laugh. <laughs> like many of you, I have grown up on this campus. During my time here, I got married, I ran my first marathon, I had a baby, I made friends that continue to impact and influence my life. Here at Rubenstein, I was able to grow as an academic, as a researcher, and as a public servant. It was in very classes and conversations with people at this school that I became the person that I am. Claire Ginger's class sparked a desire to advance environmental justice policy. My advisor, Bob Manning, and the work with the Park Studies Lab taught me the importance of translating research into real-world impacts and decision-making tools. 
and John Erickson's ecological economics class, which made it perfectly clear that I will never be any type of economist, but I will always have a deep appreciation and curiosity of how we measure and quantify the benefits of our natural world. I have thought a lot about what to say this morning, afternoon, <laughs> in my 15 years of federal government service, what it's taught me, my time at the Rubenstein School, and how it's prepared me, and what I've learned the hard way out there. I've decided to focus on the importance of the community you build, those people that sit around the table that support you and advise you. We've heard a lot about this today if you were at the ceremony this morning, but it really is really important to think about who's in your corner. So this is graduation, so I'm gonna make it a little bit academic. A defining characteristic of the Rubenstein School and the education we have received here is that it is interdisciplinary. It requires each of us to step out of our specialties and beyond our field, integrate different disciplines into our writing, our research, and our proposed solutions to complex problems. This is a skill I'm truly grateful to have instilled in me during my time here. But what does being interdisciplinary outside of academics mean? When put into practice in our daily lives, it has us reaching for experiences and advice from several branches of knowledge, bringing in diverse people into our community. It is an approach to work in life that brings people into your orbit that will challenge you and open you to new experiences that will make you richer and wiser. When I think about being interdisciplinary in my work and daily life, I think about who I invite to sit at my kitchen table, who I want to get advice from, share my hopes and dreams with, and who I need to push and challenge me. How many of you have sat around a kitchen table talking with friends and family for long hours, laughing, crying, making plans for the future? Family arguments happen around the kitchen table. Debates that are easily solved by Google happen around the kitchen table. And social movements begin at kitchen tables. All of these emerging from the everyday conversations and sharing of experiences. I have no doubt that you're leaving the Rubenstein School with friends and connections that will serve you well and support you as you take on the challenges that await you outside those doors. But I encourage you to keep growing that invitation list to your kitchen table. Add more characters to the friends and family you have sitting with you. Who is sitting at your table can define much of what you do. Think about the people you turn to advice, guidance, or to vent to. Do you have someone who will challenge your preconceived notions of a situation? Do you have someone who grew up across the country or across the globe? Do you have someone who's 20 years older than you? Do you have someone that's 10 years younger than you? Never underestimate the wisdom of a 13-year-old. I'm reminded of that every day as my child is certain he's smarter than me. <laughs> These diverse perspectives are what make a kitchen table so important. The friends I have picked up through undergrad, graduate school, and work have supported me through some of life's biggest challenges, holding me and my family up in the darkest times. And that is such an important role of that kitchen table. But here's the thing about a good kitchen table. A good kitchen table isn't just there to bolster you. They are there to open your eyes to possibilities you might not see and to force you to change for the better. Some of you sitting out here have recently gone through a defense or had your thesis reviewed. You've poured your heart and soul into a masterpiece of work only to have a committee walk in and pick it apart. Just as we go through our committees with our thesis and our defenses, we know that they are there to make our work better to make us better teachers, researchers, and contributors to the world. This is the role of a kitchen table, hopefully with less writing and PowerPoint. They should question you. They should push you. They should make you explain yourself and then support you in the decisions that you make and the paths that you choose to take. And kitchen tables aren't just for personal lives. The concept is just as true in work. What does it mean when you show up to work tomorrow? Hopefully not tomorrow, maybe Tuesday. I have worked with and led teams across all levels of government. Groups composed of community members, nonprofits, 
what I call the big L leaders in federal agencies, those with the titles, field staff. I've developed training materials and have run training programs for leaders at all levels of government. The most successful teams that I have seen and the most successful people that lead those rely on a variety of lived experiences and knowledge to address complex issues. They rely on those lived experiences and variety of knowledge to help meet community needs and find solutions to problems that seem intractable. When I am forming teams, I'm looking for individuals that not only bring those diverse perspectives, but I'm searching for people that are also seeking them out, that have that curiosity built into them, or that we can develop in them. I am focused on ensuring that leaders are developing those skills to create their own kitchen table in their workplace and in their personal lives to ensure their success. Now in our personal lives, it can be easy to create a kitchen table where everybody feels included and welcome to speak their mind. That can be very hard in the workplace to create that sense of security. If you haven't already, my guess is that you will find yourself in a room where you feel awkward, unsure, maybe even forgotten, questioning how or even if you should contribute. In those moments, I want you to do two things. Know that you belong. You are there to speak up. Bring your full self to work. It will make the experience and the outcomes richer for you and for everyone else. And two, remember that feeling. And make it your mission to not let anyone else feel that way. Create the space for others to engage, ask questions, amplify their voices. Every one of you is going to find yourself in the privileged position of leadership. So use that privilege to ensure those around you feel the security and confidence to openly contribute. Because this is where the magic of the kitchen table really lies. When you have the right people around the table, expanding viewpoints, challenging expectations, and pushing us all to be better. The highlight of my work the past 15 years has been creating environments where some of the most dedicated and smartest people across different disciplines come together and solve a challenging problem. When we create space for an open discussion, what I have found time and time again to be true is that the wisdom is in the room. The perspectives and experiences we need to find a third path, a collaborative solution that is more than the sum of its parts, is sitting around the table, listening and being creative together. And I believe that is true of this room. There is so much wisdom right here. You have experienced what no class before you has. High school Zoom graduations, first year of college that looked nothing like anyone else's. And you have successfully made it here. So I want to kind of end today with a few more points with some advice I have gotten from the wisdom of this very room. Like any good researcher, I sent out a survey. <laughs> Much of what I learned is already reflected in this speech. Talk to people in your class, strangers, have friends in odd places, grow your network, create the kitchen table that is filled with unique and unusual people, the most unique and unusual people you can find. Your support system is here for you. Take chances. They will have your back. Those are your words. Any one of you could be standing up here now, and in a few years, maybe you will be. So the best advice that I can give you as you step out those doors to start the new chapter is your own advice. Have an open heart and open mind. Share new experiences. Enjoy the newness that is upon you now. Measure your success based on your potential, not by what others are doing. And just as there are endless opportunities on campus to grow and explore, there are endless opportunities everywhere if you are willing to put yourself out there. Those are all your words. As I was reading the responses to my question, one thing was very clear. And we've already done this today, but no one gets to this point alone. 
You all have very strong kitchen tables. You have moms, dads, sisters, brothers, friends, and every possible combination that have been there for you to provide advice, even if you admit you're not taking it, and deal with level 10 drama that only mom can deal with, and to sit with you through challenges and emotions. I personally would not be here if it weren't for family, friends, and some of the very people sitting on this stage today. So before we continue this celebration of your achievement, let's take a moment to thank our kitchen tables, those that are with us today, those that are watching at home, and those that aren't with us anymore, but we carry their wisdom inside us. Thank you all for making today possible. And with that, thank you for having me with you today. Congratulations, graduates. And uh, Rebecca, I'll have you come up here one more time. A little token of our appreciation. Thank you so much. And uh, it is wonderful to have you back here. And thank you for those words of wisdom. Appreciate it. And it is now time for the presentation of the diplomas. Uh, just a note that during this ceremony, we will recognize the following academic honors. The Patrick Leahy Honors College graduates, Phi Beta Kappa inductees, and then Latin honors of summa cum laude, which is the top 1% of the Rubenstein School graduating class, magna cum laude, the next 3% of the graduating class, and cum laude, the next 6% of the graduating class. And now to present the diplomas in environmental science, Professor Jennifer Pontius. All right. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science please rise and come forward by row? Madeline Alexander Lata. <laughs> Isabel May Anderson. <laughs> Maxine. Ben Dion as Mussin. <laughs> Shannon K. Baker, Phi Beta Kappa. <laughs> Elliot J. Bloom. Virginia Bowles. Ethan. 
Ethan, sorry, Ethan Patrick Booten. <laughs> William Isaac Conyers, Leahy Honors College. Brian Joseph Daly. Zoe Antigone Decker. Bryce Cole Doherty. Ella Caroline Doyle. Shelly Moss Irvin. Jess H. Fish, summa cum laude. <laughs> Sophia Marie Fisher. <laughs> Panaria Maria Fox, cum laude. Charlotte Rose Guillen. <laughs> Catherine Isabel Giffen. <laughs> Samantha Grant. Lindsay Louise Haig. <laughs> Eli Halpin. <laughs> Philip E. Hampson. Nicole L. Hardy. <laughs> Rihanna Hellier. <laughs> Ethan Wyatt Hood. Peter J. Hyams. <laughs> ah, that was presented by his mother, Dr. Kristen DeStigter, <laughs> green and gold professor and chair of radiology at the Larner College of Medicine. Madison J. Ingram, magna cum laude. Ash Edith Diane Johnston, magna cum laude. <laughs> Owen Patrick Kelly. <laughs> Catherine Neeland. Amelia Cynthia Koval. <laughs> Caitlin P. Lewis. <laughs> Ashley 
Madeline Pamela Lapopolo. Jamie Lucia Loist. Henry August Lundy, Leahy Honors College. Eli Manier. Hudson Marks. Kennedy Marilyn McCarthy. Halsey K. McLean. Jake Allen Miller, Phi Beta Kappa. James Christopher Murphy. Samantha Olavage. Shannon Grace O'Malley. Victoria Daniela Peguri. Marissa Nicole Phillips. Caitlin Carmichael Reed. Gabriella Rose Rizzo. Kelsey Ann Rodowitz, summa cum laude. Kate Rosenberg. Catherine Grace Rowlands. John Storm Rushford. Luke William Schaefer. Joshua Sennacherib. Cameron Scambody. Allison Diana Shepherd. Gwyneth Sletton, cum laude. Haley Devin Snyder. Riley Sparks. Emily H. Taylor. Joshua Valunas. <laughs> David Campion Walsh. Yeah. 
Grace Stevens Weckeser. <laughs> Emma Ash Wetzel, Leahy Honors College. Hello. Can we get this? Yes, good. To present the diplomas in environmental studies, Professor Brendan Fisher. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Science in Environmental Studies please come forward to accept your diplomas. And before Professor D'Amato comes up here to say this about forestry students, while all Rubenstein students are special, Environmental Studies students are extra special. Avery S. Absalom. Aiden Jamin Anderson. Catherine E. Armstrong. Ryan Baranek. Maddie Bray. Maeve Kane, cum laude. Kara Campbell, cum laude. Matthew Dominic Sincoda. Margaret May Kuntz. Kira Corasanti. Reed S. Corliss. Karina Marie Crane. Charles William Denker. Alexis Jacqueline Dietrich, Leahy Honors College, Magnum Cum Laude. Ali Dillon. Chloe Ilsevi Elias. Dylan Beckwith Emsfeld. David Alexander Doss Ernest.
Natalie Caroline Fenton. Alyssa Hargrave Frame, summa cum laude. Ryan Gallagher. Olivia C. Galuzzo, cum laude. Jack Dalton Goodman. Brendan Hamill O'Neill. Angus D. Hearn. Florence, Grace Florence Catrick. Dennis Koryukin. Eve Yvonne Lalumia. Victoria Lida. Nicole Elizabeth Lemieux, magnum cum laude. Neva Ann Leavitt. Get your card first, Jack. Jack Harrison Locker. <laughs> Taya Ruby Kip Logley. <laughs> Ellen A. Matson. Catherine Rose Mon. Aiden Lang McDougall, cum laude. Flynn Hawkinson Opatz. Zoe Francis Rappaport, cum laude. Keen Michael Rowland. Veronica Ross. Charles J. Scribner. Sorry. Evelyn Trethen Seidner, cum laude. Thomas Stearns. Ellie Lauren Treichler. <laughs> Juliana Ward.
To present the diplomas in forestry, Professor Tony D'Amato. Well, I was going to keep this civil and stay on the script, but my colleague, Dr. Fisher, had to uh, barb me here. And so I'd like to welcome all the students receiving a Bachelor of Science and the only major on the entire campus to win a National Quiz Bowl this year, um, the students from the Bachelor of Science in Forestry. So, so those from the, receiving a Bachelor of Science in Forestry, please rise and come up to the stage. Troy Austin Ahmed. <laughs> Quinn Holden Alper, magna cum laude. <laughs> Micah Allen Bernat. Callahan Burke. Aaron Kamar. Jonas James Campagna. Jonathan Richard Campbell. <laughs> Emma Conti. Samuel Meter Crafts. <laughs> Alexander Stanley Durham. <laughs> Nicholas Paul Graceffa. Teresa Lois Helms. <laughs> Parker Evans Kimberly, cum laude. Spencer William Kimball. Lake Lust. Savannah Brooke Madar. Jackie Morrow. Nicholas Snowy. Alana Rose Richmond. Mary Roth, cum laude. Liv Schneider.
Adrian C. Staples. Ian Charles Thompson. Angelo Trevisani. Ezra Zimmer. Now I will present the diplomas in natural resources and in sustainability, ecology, and policy. Will the graduates with a Bachelor of Science in Natural Resources or a Bachelor of Science in Sustainability, Ecology, and Policy please rise and come forward? kind of a dance back here. There we go. <laughs> Leslie A. Campbell. <laughs> Ashley Patricia K Cray. River Joseph DeFleese. <laughs> Avery Christopher Feely, cum laude. <laughs> Owen Grants. <laughs> Laszlo Jacob. Valentin M. Kastelnik, cum laude. Christopher Jude Lamb, summa cum laude. Ainsley C. Larson. Julia Elizabeth Lindau. <laughs> Madeline Mackay Love. <laughs> Taylor Gray McCary. Steckel. Isla Jane Stover. Abigail Grace Talaga. And now we have the graduates with a Bachelor of Science in Sustainability, Ecology, and Policy, the first three in this major. <laughs> Elizabeth Elias Peace. Woo! 
Natalie Sandvich. Benjamin Thomas Supran. And now to present the diplomas in Parks, Recreation, and Tourism, Professor Patricia Stokowski. Will the graduates with a Bachelor of Science degree in Parks, Recreation, and Tourism please rise and come forward? Camden Arnold. Sarah Beth Atwood. Teddy Seibel Cohen. Richie Coviello. Cole L. Cross. <laughs> Alexander Iantuono. Anders Peter Klinkenberg. Autumn McDowell. Anna Claire Miller. Jack Edward Olender. <laughs> Kayla B. Prouty. <laughs> Sarah Sexton, cum laude. Sarah Shipman. Christian Holland Wall. Brooke Douglas Wise. Abigail Beth Young. And last but not least, Cole Gallagher Zuwalik. Can I get, thank you. Now to present the diplomas in wildlife and fisheries biology, Professor Ellen Marsden.
And not to be outdone, I just want to point out that we have saved the best for last. Would the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Wildlife and Fisheries please rise and come forward by row? Henry Matthew Bartels. Pierre Barang. Abigail Nia Bell. Abigail Jenna Berkowitz. <laughs> Mackenzie Bruce. <laughs> Abigail Lee Bursis. <laughs> Amy Elizabeth. Kalman. So Sophie Crosby Can. Isabel Grace Collum. Julia Di Giovanni. <laughs> Michael P. Doucette. <laughs> Alana Marie Duff. Tara Dupree. Christopher J. Floriani, whose degree is going to be, his diploma is going to be presented by his sister-in-law, Associate Professor Rachel Floriani. Mariana Janine Foppis. <laughs> Hilary Edwina Good. <laughs> Ocean Eremon Angus Harrington. Gretchen A. Hinkle. <laughs> Megan Johnson. <laughs> June Doriel Laub. <laughs> Come laude. It's hard to get out there. Trent D. Laughlin.
Soham Mater Magnum Cum Laude, Leahy, uh, Cum Laude, Leahy Honors College. Excuse me. Samantha Christine Nicoloro. Anna L. Pelkey. Benjamin Fox Quigley. John Henry Rice the Fourth. Kotaro James Suguchi. Meryl Ann Sodith. Cum laude. Anna Patricia Templeton. Stella Antonio Vercesi. Theodore J.B. Whiteman. Congratulations. A small logistical note. Should you happen to have gotten a diploma with the incorrect name, or you expected a diploma and you did not get one, after the recessional, you can report back to the mysterious behind the black curtain. Thank you. So now, Professors Amy Seidel and Mariano Rodriguez Cabal will honor two of our graduates Jack Harrison Locker, Locker and Sohan Mehta, who received university awards at this morning's commencement ceremony. Jack and Sohan, please join us here on the platform. We'll start with Jack. It is our pleasure to have jointly nominated Jack Locker for the Environmental Citizen Award for the class of 2024. Jack's faculty in the Rubenstein School, the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, the College of, A of Arts and Sciences, were all unanimous about Jack's nomination, a testament to the impact Jack has had on us. Jack is a highly skilled, intellectually curious, and deeply engaged individual who exemplifies environmental citizenship and stewardship. For four years, Jack has stood out as inquisitive and serious about his academic work and its implications for stewarding life on Earth. 
from renewable energy systems and greening Aiken to carbon offsets and campus sustainability to the restoration of natural areas in Vermont's floodplains, Jack has looked for every possible outlet to dive deeply into ideas and to engage in action. Jack gets right to it. Jack is a model of what UVM aims to realize as an environmental university, a passionate individual with broad knowledge and specific skills, both honed by experiential learning and campus and community service. He's eager, downright fiery to get to work. For these reasons, we bestow the Environmental Citizenship Award to Jack Locker. Congratulations, Jack. The Kidder Medal honors the UVM senior who ranks first in leadership, scholarship, and character. It's award in the UVM commencement ceremony and Sohan Metan, profound dedication to wildlife conservation and ecology is evident through his diverse and impactful experience. As a research intern with the Wildlife Conservation Society in India, he contributes significantly to the Mumbai Leopard and Shackle project, demonstrating expertise in camera trap, sampling, data management, and scat analysis. Nice. <laughs> His leadership skills shown in the Urban Oil Project in India, where he managed citizen science groups and built a comprehensive database across multiple cities. So have global engagement continue at the University of St. Andrews in the United Kingdom, contributing to the shark coloration project. His commitment to wildlife research extended to the COVID-19 wildlife surveillance study in Vermont and his role as a big cat and wildlife monitoring research intern in Kenya showcased a range of skills from creating a leopard population identity kit to monitoring various species and conducting distance sampling. With volunteer experience in both Kenya and South Africa, Soham consistently demonstrated a profound understanding of human wildlife interactions and dedications to conservation effort. Soham, a strong collaboration with faculty, NGOs, US Fish and Wildlife Services, and Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department highlight his ability to forge mindful connections. Additionally, Soham serves as the president of the Wildlife Society Student Chapter of UVM and co-founded the UVM International Students Club. Soham is also an amazing photographer who, whose work has been featured on BBC Earth and National Geographic. <laughs> Finally, Soham has served in our Rivington School Inclusion, Diversity, Equity and Action Committee, compromise of faculty, staff, and students. Soham's works contribute greatly to the development of our inclusive excellence plan. Many Rubinstein School committees seek input from students to help ensure their work is relevant and meaningful to our graduate and undergraduate students. However, we cannot recall a committee where an undergrad contribution has been so important and formative. Congratulations, Soham. We have three faculty members from the Rubenstein School who will be retiring at the end of this uh, academic year. And the first I'd like to have come forward, Dr. Claire Ginger. <laughs> Associate Professor Emerita of Environmental Policy and Planning. Dr. Claire Ginger, you earned your PhD from the University of Michigan. You joined the Rubenstein School of Environment and Natural Resources 
1994 and were promoted to associate professor in 2001. Your dedication to DEI initiatives and student success has led to awards from UVM's Mosaic Center for Students of Color, UVM's Women and Gender Equity Center, and the Rubenstein School's Marsha Caldwell Award. You've advised 25 master's students and have published numerous peer-reviewed journal articles, book chapters, monographs, and technical reports. You have been a force in leading the Natural Resources Program, now Sustainability, Ecology, and Policy, and your leadership has been incredible in infusing diversity, equity, and inclusion into our environmental work. We thank you for your commitment to the Rubenstein community and are very thankful you'll be back part-time next year. <laughs> Congratulations, Claire. Uh, second, we have Dr. Adrian Ivakiv, Professor of Environmental Thought and Culture. Adrian could not be with us today, but I'd like to read his citation. Dr. Adrian J. Ivakiv, you earned your PhD in Environmental Studies from York University. You joined the faculty of the Rubenstein School in 2003 and were promoted to full professor in 2013. You've been honored as a UVM scholar, a public humanities fellow, and the Stu Stephen Rubenstein Professor for Environment and Natural Resources. You've served as a senior research fellow at the Free University of Berlin, a Fulbright Scholar, and a fellow of the Gund Institute for Environment. Your books include the critically acclaimed Ecologies of the Moving Cinema, of the Moving Image, Cinema, Affect, and Nature. We wish you the best in your new role as the J.S. Woodworth Chair in Humanities at Simon Fraser University in Vancouver. Congratulations, Adrian. And next, Dr. J. Where'd you go? Dr. J. Ellen Marsden, Professor Emerita of Fisheries Biology. <laughs> Dr. J. Ellen Marsden, you received your PhD from Cornell University and joined the Rubenstein School of Environment and Natural Resources in 1996, earning full professor in 2006. Your research focuses on the restoration and ecology of freshwater fish with a focus on lake trout and non-native species. You've published 140 peer-reviewed journal articles and book chapters and have served as the advisor for 20 master's students and four PhD students, as well as 10 postdoctoral associates. You're a fellow of the American Fisheries Society. At UVM, you've been awarded the Glenn Elder Leadership Award for support of LGBT community and the Marshall Caldwell Award for dedication to the students in the Rubenstein School. Your work has been instrumental in securing our new research vessel, the Marcel Melisaira. Thank you for your contributions to the Rubenstein School and UVM and the best of luck in your future endeavors. And thank you as well for sticking around next year to see serve as the director of the Rubenstein Lab. Congratulations, Ellen. Okay, a couple of closing remarks. There's a frog on the stage. Brittany, is this your frog? <laughs> Graduates, I am so proud of all of you. You've done so much in your time in the Rubenstein School to make this community, this state, this world a better place. You've learned new skills in GIS, in dendrology, in park management, and in environmental justice. And you've developed expertise in teamwork, problem solving, communication, and critical thinking. You're graduating at a time in which we face many daunting challenges. And we often 
confront these challenges with words like resilience, adaptation, or transition. But we can also turn to the creative arts for ways to, in which we can address these challenges. I personally find comfort in poetry, in particular, bad poetry. So here goes. This one's called Hoot. Afternoon lab in centennial woods, disconnect from material goods, meditating to stay present as snow turns hemlocks luminescent. I notice golden leaves on soil, divert my thoughts from law of boil, taking in nature's mystique and balance on log to cross the creek. How will this look in 20 years? Will symbiosis disappear? Or will we find a resilient trail that allows our forests to prevail? Can we help nature to adapt with new skills that have been untapped? The answer lies in the owl's call. Who cooks for you? Who cooks for you all? Students, you know what to do. One, two, three. Oh, 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 oh. Do one more. One more on three. One, two, three. Woof, 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 woof. Woof, woof, woof. Very good. I wish you all the very best. Stay strong, stay engaged, and be true to yourself. Please keep in touch. Drop us a line and stop by the Aiken Center whenever you're in town. I wish you all the best as you move on to the next step in your journey. Thank you all for being here today. Safe travels. And congratulations to the class of 2024. Adjourned. I ask that the audience please remain in their seats until the faculty and the graduates have recessed. When you exit, please follow the directional signs which will bring you to the reception with light refreshments at the Harris Millis Complex. Now. Thank you.